Welcome, welcome, everyone. It's another episode of the Canon Culture Podcast, where we do it for the cash, the clout, and of course, to advance the culture. I am your host, Just Jay Sama, and unfortunately, I'm not here with my producer, Plankon, uh, but he is producing today's episode. He is here with us in spirit. Uh, Today, we've got a pretty good show lined up for you guys today. Is Disney dead? And we got a couple of comments from Bob Iger, so we're going to go over that in just a minute. But I want to take a second to thank every single one of you guys, every single one of you for supporting the show, for watching the video version, the audio, you know, following all the socials and everything like that. Um, Also, if you guys are watching the video version, of course, make sure to hit that like button so that way, you know, we know you like the episode. If you're new around here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure to turn on those notifications for whenever a new show drops. I also would like to say thank you to our audio listeners, whether you're listening on Apple, Spotify, Google, whatever it may be. Um, And also, if you guys could do us a favor, if you are listening on the audio version, could you go ahead and give us a five star rating for this episode? Um, That'll greatly help us move up in the algorithm and really please the podcasting gods to show them like, hey, look, (laughs) we back, baby, we back. It'll basically help us move us move up in the algorithm so that way we could get potential listeners. So also, of course, everything that we talk about in today's episode, there's going to be links down in the description below so you guys can scroll down, read everything for yourself. And also, finally, if you would like to financially support the show, uh, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Uh, we drop weekly content exclusive for Patreon over there. Uh, there's going to be a link for that in the description as well. So... Uh, Let's go ahead and move on to the show. Let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. Ladies and gentlemen, I I don't know if you guys know this, but let's talk Jideon, okay? Jideon, Jideon, however we're supposed to pronounce my brother's name. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are very, very familiar with him and his work, uh, specifically doing prank content and, you know, lots of online memes is what I would consider it. But my brother is really experiencing a whole different type of plot this week. Um, My man has decided to go back and delete all of his previous prank videos, uh, which, you know, seems a little weird to me. I think his change from, you know, being a prank kind of like hee hee ha ha funny kind of content creator, um, if that's even the bracket that we're going to put him in, to be honest, look. I I don't think I think he missed the plot, man. I think he's really missing a lot here. And um, although I do support his decision to, you know, kind of fully embrace his faith, which is which is cool. You know, I don't knock the brother. He's very successful. You know, do what you do. But this man decided to go back and delete all of his mischievous content. Now his words specifically. Uh, that he said and I won't ever be the way I was anymore So if you won't cut me off from you, then I need to cut myself off from you So that's why I deleted all my videos. I Don't want to be the stumbling block in your way no more I don't want to be the reason why you keep on living in sin I don't want to be a hindrance from keeping you from the kingdom of God no longer So that's why all my content is gone and that's why I'll never come back and while I know we made a lot of good memories and I know a lot of my content wasn't quote unquote that bad, I'm gonna just get rid of all of it. It's all gone. I'll never be seen again because I love you guys. And before, this is the end y'all, this is the end. This is the last thing I have to say. This is the last thing I'll ever say is Jadeon, I forgive Tyrone. <laughs> I forgive Tyrone. That was the last thing I had to say, y'all. I had to get that off my heart. Now the F Tyrone is for forgive Tyrone. So I forgive him. It's all good. And that's a wrap, y'all. That's a wrap. I love you guys. Appreciate y'all. God bless. Y'all be safe. Peace. If I'm going to truly give my life over to God, I have... I ha- <laughs> I got to also take out the wickedness that I put into the world. Now, obviously people have mixed feelings about this. A lot of people are saying this is a Gideon L and of course, you know, people are a little upset about this, you know. Uh one guy actually put 
let's see uh <laughs> he said it's really corny that this dude is doing this but that's what these youtubers need to do nowadays to get attention can't just make content anymore um this comes from nicholas light tv um what does this guy even do 45,000 followers on Twitter. Let's see. He's got 896,000 subscribers. So yeah, he might got a couple million views on some videos here. Uh, this guy know, might, might know what he's talking about. So very interesting criticism from him, but uh, I don't know. J Gideon kind of has done this full 180 as far as his content. Uh, a lot of people are saying this is an end of an era, giving him L's, you know, just on Twitter in this article. Uh, one guy even said he really threw his whole career away at its peak. I didn't follow him for him alone. I followed him because he made funny videos. Look, man, I I agree. I, I think this is very strange, but also at the same time, I gotta, I gotta respect that this guy wants to back away from making the content that he used to make. Now, if he's making Christian content, I don't know. That's one thing. If people want to support that, that's another thing. But i feel like i'm mixed here because he clearly doesn't care about the money anymore because obviously you could just leave those videos up people will go back and watch them you'll generate millions of views and stuff like that on the back end adsense is is great on the back end my brother that that mighty dollar you know kicking in every every month <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure that bag might have been nice you know um it doesn't i don't know if he's streaming on any additional platforms because i think he was i think he's still banned off of twitch so you know i'm sure you guys will correct me but yeah i don't i don't really know man this uh seems like it, it truly is the end of an era but you know respect to that man and you know everything that he's got working on so i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure he's got something going on um but if i could take a second to kind of pivot over to another thing i know we kind of abruptly didn't really have much of an ending with the Gideon conversation so if you guys have anything else you want to add on make sure to follow us on social media you guys can interact with us um also the discord link is going to be down below so if you guys really really want to participate in some you know conversation of any kind yeah yeah, yeah you might want to might want to hit that link man um so let's move on to our next topic elon musk is responding to bob Iger's comments and a couple of other advertisers a couple of other advertisers that have decided to stop spending money on twitter and stop advertising on twitter he says go fuck yourself his exact his exact words uh in this interview he did with the what is this the new york times yeah it is with the new york times we actually have uh the audio footage let me go ahead and pull that up for a second uh okay here we go um he was asked what this advertising boy let's see uh his exact response is what this advertising boycott is going to do is kill the company the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company um apparently this comes as to a reaction from him replying to an anti-semitic post or a tweet i guess he had said something this is the first i'm hearing of it um and he says i should have not replied to that particular person so it's probably somebody that tweeted at him or said something to him uh that was anti-semitic and he responded to it I'd rather that be positive or negative i don't know i'm not gonna take do my due diligence to go and figure that out i'll just link the article down below and you guys can figure that out uh, he says, I essentially handled, handed a loaded gun to those who hate me. <laughs> he says it's one of the most foolish posts he's made on Twitter. So, yeah, it was a tweet. Um, let's go ahead and play the audio here. Obviously, you know that there's a public perception that, and, and you're clarifying this now, um, but there's a public perception that that was part of a apology tour, if you will. That was this had been said online. There was all of the criticism. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger today. I hope today. they stop. You hope? Uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. But go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. Well, well, let me ask you then. That's how I feel. Don't about, advertise. How do you think then about the economics of, of X? If, if, if 
if part of the underlying model, at least today, and maybe it needs to shift, maybe the answer is it needs to shift away from advertising. Um, if, if you believe that this is the one part of your business where you will be beholden to those who uh, have this view, G what do you do? F Y. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too, <laughs> right? Yes. No. No. It, it, I, I mean, Linda no, Yaccarino's right here, and she's uh, got to sell advertising. Uh, absolutely. So, um, no. No. Totally. So. So. No. No. Actually, what what this advertising boycott is uh, is is going to do? It's it's going to kill the company. And you think that the company? But, and the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company, and we will document it in great detail. But there are those advertisers. I imagine are going to say. They're going to say we didn't kill the company. Oh yeah. They're going to say tell it to the, tell it to Earth. But they're going to say that they're going to say Elon that you killed the company because you said these things, and that they were inappropriate things, and that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform. Right. Let's that's see. that's and, what and they're going to say. And let's see how Earth responds to that. <laughs> now, listening back to this, I I I get. I get that Elon Musk doesn't think he needs the money. I get that. I understand Elon is running the ship of Twitter slash X however he wants to. But my brother in Christ, please, you have missed the plot on this. Um, what, what do you think is, do you really think people are going to be like the advertisers killed Twitter? Or do you think people are going to think Elon Musk killed Twitter? Because honestly it's, it's looking like it's the second thing the numerous amount of idiotic decisions that elon musk has made since taking over twitter nobody is really going to look at it as oh disney warner and all these other people stop advertising so that's what killed twitter absolutely not no it's going to be your continuous choice after choice after idiotic choice of doing just dumb shit to the platform that really made it just die because without money coming in you're still losing tons of money like i don't know if you guys know this but there's been multiple articles that have come out specifically about how much money twitter is really bringing in how much money twitter is bleeding on a daily if not weekly monthly basis since elon has taken over it's it was worth the double million like double digit millions up until recently where I think it's like, I, I, I probably should really should do my homework on here, but let's just say it's it's dropped dramatically from like 15, 18, 20 million or something like that to like 4.8 million or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are. You guys can go ahead and do additional research and let me know. But yeah, he's, he's essentially been killing Twitter, which is why we've had the weird changes with the verification badges and uh, the, the tiered leveling of subscriptions for Twitter. Like, it's, it's just not making any sense. This guy really does not fuck with this platform at all. And, and it really makes me miss Jack Dorsey, to be honest. For Jack to have told the board and, like, allowed this this takeover to happen bro this this absolutely sucks this platform is 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 just terrible now there are ports uh, ports oh my god forgive me guys I, it's late at night and i'm trying to record this there are parts of twitter that i actually enjoy now but i also hate at the same time engagement farming is at an all-time high because once you pay for the verification, you now can do, you know, you could be a Twitter content creator. I'm saying this with air quotes because the more engagement you get, you actually get paid off of ads being placed on your tweets, which is so interesting considering Elon is in a, it, this doesn't make any sense because Elon is in a deficit, which is why he wants the consumers of Twitter to subsidize all of the money that he's losing. I, I don't understand why would you not want these extremely popular advertisers to give you free money just to just for posts to exist on the platform this guy is just it, it, he's missing the plot it's just it's honestly the dumbest shit i could ever think of and then obviously there's mixed reactions to you know a lot of the things that are going on in this thread on twitter People are saying he's the go, you know, this is exactly the way you should be running a company. And then some people are like, meh. And then it's just, and then the other ones are, yeah, that's the way to keep pedophiles off the platform. This is a great way to get investors. You know, it's just, it's just a myriad of just 
dumb shit. So it's just, you know, people are obviously hating on Disney. They're like, yeah, stick it to Disney. Disney probably can't even afford ads right now. That new Disney movie, Wish, just, just flopped in the box office. So yeah, I don't know. People are really using this as a springboard to kind of get their own bullshit off in the comments. And it's like, bro, you, first of all, let me, let me click the person who typed this dude has 33 followers and he, he has a verified badge, bro. I just, <sighs> he doesn't have a single viral tweet. He doesn't have anything penned. It, it's just like, he's liking celebrity deep fakes. This guy is, this guy is actually gross. This guy is the scum of the earth. Like, I just, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just some weird dude. So, I don't know. Elon is really trying to drive this website into the ground. And it sucks because I've been on this website since... I Actually, let me pull it up. I've been on Twitter. I joined December of 2010. December of 2010. Like, <laughs> come on. I'm... I've been on this platform so fucking long. I've I've always loved Twitter. I've loved Twitter's, you know, the experience, the space. I love everything about Twitter. But now it's just like, oh my god, this is just so embarrassing. Just, you know, it's it's just kind of hard to see a platform that I have really enjoyed just drive itself into a ditch. So, yeah. How about this one? Advertisers are, you know. I don't know how that would make potential advertisers fear, feel that they're like, oh, well, Elon clearly doesn't care if we advertise on this platform. And it's like, bro, you're, you're I, I understand once again that you're making enough money to where you're like, the website is fine. The platform is fine. We're bringing in enough money. Who cares? But like, holy shit, dude. Holy shit. So speaking of uh holy shit moments uh let's go ahead and jump into something that i really really wanted to talk about today um and it's it's bob Iger's comments recently yes guys i know i'm bringing up bob Iger again yes i know i'm talking about him again i have his name in my mouth listen listen the current ceo of the house of mouse is is really getting on my nerves lately because recently he had an interview with Deadline where he said, the, and I quote, Disney needs to be focusing on quality over quantity. Now, if, if that sounds familiar to you, if, that, if my saying that Bob Iger said that Disney needs to focus on quality over quantity, you'd be right. That has been said multiple times. Matter of fact, multiple people on Twitter have observed the specific dates where Bob Iger has gone on record to say that Disney needs to focus on quality over quantity. And now let me just go ahead and read these back for you. Um, December 11th, 2020, Disney needs to priority quality over quantity, says Bob Iger. Uh, Bob Iger says Disney will be focusing on quality over volume moving forward. This is October 8th of 2023. Um, and then we also have Walt Disney executive chairman Bob Iger promised the company will always priority quality, not, vol not volume in November 12th of 2020. Um, also stated by Deadline. And now here we are. <laughs> In November 28th of 2023, Disney prioritize, prioritizes quality over quantity. Now, listen, listen, Bob, Bob, this doesn't make any sense because not only have you previously gone on record saying that you don't think that any point, any time during your return as CEO of Disney, you've never second guessed any of your decisions. Not, you haven't second guessed any of the strikes. Okay, you haven't, this, <laughs> that's, that's actually insane. In a town hall uh, recently uh, with the Hollywood Reporter uh, is actually reporting on this with ABC. Um, the CEO said, he told employees of his company that his second time as CEO has obviously been more challenging than anticipated, but that he's nonetheless optimistic about the entertainment giant's future. He quotes, I'm going to quote him and say, and say this, I knew that there would be a myriad of challenges that I would face coming back. I won't say it has been easy, but I've never second guessed the decision to come back and 
being back still feels great. I had spent the year with the team fixing a lot of things, but I feel like we've just emerged from a period of a lot of fixing to one of building again, and I can tell you building is a lot more fun than fixing. Now Bob, 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 buddy, buddy boy, come here. Let me, let me, let me talk to you for a second, Bob. Um, this doesn't make any sense coming from you. Um, it, it really doesn't because what have you been doing previously? If we've been working on quality, what, what have we been doing, big dog? <laughs> what have we been working on? Because, uh, none of this shit seems to make any sense at all. Um, and not only that, you're also on record uh, in an interview with CNBC's media reporter, Alex Sherman. Okay, let me, let me just go ahead and cite a source here. Bob Iger says that creators at Disney have, seem, have seemingly lost sight of what their jobs are and what their jobs should be. It's entertainment first, not messages. Now, brother, <laughs> What, what what projects are you referring to? Because if you're referring to the all-female cast of the Marvels that recently came out, that just dropped, that nobody seemed like they were interested in, it seems like you and your team have lost the plot post-Endgame. Yeah, of course we have some bangers, okay? And this is just focusing on Marvel. We, we haven't even begun to talk about how amazing Encanto was. We haven't even begun to begin to talk about how terrible Wish is performing, or any of the Disney Plus services, or the fact that you're trying to subsidize losing so much ground when it comes to these strike negotiations that now you're hiking up Disney Plus prices again. Like, bro, none of what you say is making any sense with your actions it's just it's just really not he continues to add that stories infused with positive messages for the world can be great but that it shouldn't be the primary job now uh, uh, okay okay sure let's let's rock with that let's rock with that for a second what does that exactly mean because in some of the older movies i mean it let's let's just Pick a rabbit out of a hat the lion king the lion king was a great story told about responsibility redemption and our role in the circle of life mulan about bravery self-discovery and challenging so societal norms hercules the journey of self-discovery the true meaning of heroism like these these are underlying themes that exist <laughs> and these are some of disney's like banger films in the 90s so I'm, I'm i'm a little confused um not only are these movies entertaining but they also teach multiple messages okay Let, let's just go recent the little mermaid how about ex uh, exploration the pursuit of your dreams and happiness and the consequences of deals made when in desperation is is that not is that not something that we're thinking about here hello uh, so bob i really i really need you to to put your head on properly brother because it's it seems to be backwards sideways 20 feet far up your ass because you have no idea you have no finger on the pulse you really have no idea what's going on in the culture brother you really don't and, and once again another person who has missed the plot so and and you know Lastly, speaking of gigantic media heads, uh, let's we really need to talk about Dave, David Zaslav. Guys, I know I'm running on and on about these multiple billionaires who are clearly far more successful than myself, but these people have potentially missed the plot. We're talking about David Zaslav. Now, <sighs> David says something very interesting here, man. Very, very interesting. He claims that a lot of these scrapped projects, if you guys did not know, Warner and Discovery have been scrapping a lot of, of projects, including Batgirl, which a lot of people really, really wanted to see, um, which apparently test screened really well. But we still got the Flash green lit. I don't... I really do. I could do a whole episode on the Flash. Okay, we could really do a whole canon culture episode on on what's going on with the Flash and how that has developed, and then going into Aquaman two. Not to mention all of the horrendous things to happen in in the course of the creation of the Flash movie. It's just 
Yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, back to David. Uh, David says that it took a lot of courage to scrap the movies that have been scrapped. This is also including the Wile E. Coyote movie recently that has that's getting shopped around. You know, uh, I think it's Wile E. Coyote versus uh, Acme. I think. It, uh, hold on, let me see what it is. It's Wile E. Coyote uh, versus Acme. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Coyote versus Acme is the is the working term for that right is it's a 70 million dollar budget that is the working title that they're going with apparently this movie scored so well with their test screenings but they chose to scrap it as a tax write-off now in this interview with the deal book um which is a interesting publication i'm going to include the verge article so you guys can read this yourself David talks about how it took courage to cancel these projects. Apparently, he says that once money is spent on projects, making a choice to not release a project and spend even more is a strategic decision. Now, my mans, <laughs> my mans, David, come here. Let me talk to you the way I talk to Bob. Get your head out of your ass. Okay, because none of this, none of this makes any sense. When you put two and two together and you're getting one, <laughs> listen, brother, the Flash did not perform the way that you thought it would. It just, it just really didn't. Let's, let's be really honest. Hardly any of your, your James Gunn led DCEU or DCU or whatever it is that you guys are working on, hardly any of that is really getting off the ground. Um, I'm, I'm really thinking, hold on. Let's look this up. Because it's looking like you guys have record breaking losses. I'm reading this article from the direct and not only was the flash a, a okay. We're looking at Shazam fury of the gods. Also a okay. Blue beetle. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is already, it's not even out, and it's already looking to be a because you have a huge price tag on these movies. It's a $205 million budget for Aquaman. And most of that, I'd have to say, probably 112, maybe $120 million of that is probably reshoots. It's probably reshoots. It's probably huge. So I'm wondering at what point did you decide? Hey, you know what? We're going to go with these other projects, but the ones that were testing really well, you were like, yeah, we got, we got to get rid of those. Now, I'm also wondering, would this have been beneficial to allow James Gunn to come in a little bit earlier? I'm not, I, I wouldn't even know how you would fix this, brother. I wouldn't even know how you would fix this, but just know that the beginning of your problems are you're just you're not even at the horizon yet brother you and bob Iger are gonna have a very very interesting time period of the next five years I, and and it's it's gonna be interesting because the projects that you guys have coming out you better hope people like them obviously you guys are billionaires you guys are multi-millionaires you're making drastically more money than i could ever think about ever dream of really so uh yeah you know i think you'll be fine i think you'll be okay but look guys you're taking an l just know you're taking an l for the culture and uh we appreciate that because you give us something to talk about so speaking of something else to talk about <laughs> um this one kind of frustrates me so I, I was scrolling through my timeline the other day and by the other day i mean today uh as of the recording of this video and I saw this very interesting article um, that's on, what is this? Um, very, very aligned gaming. I think this is what this is. And apparently EA is working on a player voiced character feature for their upcoming games. Now, this, this seems very silly. And I, I say silly because this could be a cool idea that goes very, very badly. Um, and I only say that 
because it, it really seems like these companies don't want to pay the people that they're supposed to pay. So anyway, let me culture crave, which is one of my favorite, you know, sources of entertainment. Um, EA has apparently patented uh, the uh, so a new piece of technology that will enable players to make their in-game characters speak with their own voices. Players input the speech and the tech replicates their voice on the main character. Now, this sounds like a cool idea. I see a lot of people kind of praising it in the <laughs> in the comments, but I also see a lot of people saying prepare for disappointment because half of you people can't read. <laughs> And then Opera GX, of course, Opera GX has the has one of the greatest marketing teams ever. They said, we can always count on EA to only innovate when it comes to cutting corners. And I, I cannot agree more because why would you not just pay your voice actors? You guys are really trying to get out. Uh, ever since this SAG deal went through, you guys are really really trying to cut corners when it comes to creatives you guys are really trying to cut corners when it comes to actors and voice actors and actual talent look yeah it sounds like a cool feature to be able to have your main character have your voice that would be that would be dope right cool idea the problem is it's ea ea is probably going to charge you ten dollars for this feature that's number one so we we already don't want that even if they don't why would you not just want to pay your voice actors? I don't understand why that is so difficult. You want to eliminate a whole job, a whole job for the main character, just so that way you can use some AI bullshit of my recordings to, to create this character. You're really putting a whole person out of a job because you don't want to pay them what they're worth. You don't want to pay their residuals. Listen, listen, listen. These, these, these companies, bro, these companies are absolutely crazy. I don't know who came up with this idea. I don't know who made this decision, but somebody was fucking around with Eleven Labs and was just like, what if we let the gamers be in the game? Like, okay just just fucking kill me that i really hope that this flops i really hope that this idea goes nowhere i hope it crashes and burns but oh boy i already know that it's not so here's uh, additional parts of the rundown the patent outlines a system that involves inputting speech content data into a synthesizer module AKA an AI. So it has you record certain phrases and things that you say in order for the AI model to create a replica of your voice, which generates a source of acoustic feature representing the desired voice or style. The heart of the patent is a voiceover converter, which uses an acoustic feature encoder to meld the source acoustic characteristics with a target speaker embedded associated with the player, basically the character replicating uh the player's voice for the in-game character this technology can generate speech audio in the player's voice allowing the character to speak with the player's unique personal voice and it even even captures non-verbal verbal elements of speech like tone emotion and emphasis get get this ai bullshit out of here this is just this is just a slippery slope. And guys, I've talked about this before, but the way that AI technology is now, this is going to be the worst that it ever is. It's it's never going to get it's never going to get any it's never going to go backwards, right? This is the worst it's ever going to be. This is the lowest performing version of the technology right now. Because after this, every single day, these technologies advance more and more and more, and it's it's this is the worst it's going to be. So uh, EA has apparently filed for the patent titled Generating Speech in the Voice of a Player of a Video Game. So it's been submitted as of October 2020. So this will be very interesting. So I don't know if you guys are ready to voice your own characters, but obviously that feature is going to be turned off. So I wonder if they're not going to pay a main voice actor. I wonder if it's going to become a requirement for you to voice your own character. So at that point, they don't have to pay a voice actor and they don't have to pay you residuals. Now, here's the thing. 
that last part, pay you residuals. Imagine you're not reading the fine print to play any of these EA games, right? And you just decide to read the prompts for, you know, having your voice being created in, in let's say, you know, whatever EA video game, whatever, right? So let's say like, uh, they have a new Mass Effect Andromeda 2, right? So you're, you're hopping on the microphone, you're reading the, the lines in different sophisticated manners and emphasis and saying certain words sounding lower and higher and just having different ranges of being able to speak. Now, what is EA gonna do with this recording? Because obviously it's EA. They're about to take your shit and in, in the fine print of the terms and conditions of you using this feature on their game, we are now allowed, I just, here it is, in quotes, we are now, here's lawyer jargon for some of you guys who don't understand. We now have ownership in perpetuity of your voice content and voice property, blah, 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 lawyer jargon, we own your voice indefinitely forever and we can use it for any commercial purposes. Basically, they can take your voice without your permission and put it in other video games. Which sounds cool. Which sounds like, oh my god, like that. This is my shortcut to be a voice actor. No, that's not how this works. Because it's just like how the these gigantic production companies, Disney, Warner, all these other ones, were trying to get AI models of background actors and stuff like that and use them whenever they want and they don't have to pay them residuals. They don't have to give you money based off of sales. They don't have to give you money based off of, uh, you know, how much of the project that you're in because you volunteered to give your voice for free. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on. Let's think here, people. This is, this is, this is gonna get out of the bag very quickly and it's going to be gross. It's going to be everywhere. So I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm hoping we see a lot of pushback against this. I hope we start seeing some legislation. And I'm, I, I, listen, I'm a user. I love creating shit with AI. I really do. Like artwork, music, uh, even some of my videos I've tried, they didn't do so well, but I love it. It's great. If we could just keep it where it's at right now and it never gets any better. I'd be happy with that, but that's not how life works, unfortunately. So, you know, really depressing to think about, but hey, man, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much it for today's show. Guys, if you enjoyed this little rant that I went on for this 35, 45 minutes or whatever, let me know. Uh, it's honestly getting the show back to its original roots of being able to talk about pop culture and gaming and all of these things and really come up with ways and solutions that we can help move the culture forward because I, I really hope that this episode did that. A lot of episodes that we have recorded have been great, but they don't hit that core of moving the culture forward. Yeah, it's great every single episode we talk about more entertaining things and we have a very dynamic conversation with me and Plank and if we have a guest every now and then or the topics that we're talking about but you know we we need to get back to work man so uh, uh shout out to producer plank he will be back on the next episode uh which i'm actually going to drop at the same time as this recording so if you guys are you know in the mood there's another episode coming up right after this so um but hey i want to thank you guys for listening to the canon culture podcast uh it has been great i have really 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 enjoyed doing this episode although i did run out of breath a lot so it's just gonna take me a little bit of practice to really get used to it and i'm filming this super late at night so i kind of have to watch how loud i speak and stuff like that so um hopefully you guys have enjoyed this i am definitely looking forward to making another one if you guys are watching the video version make sure to hit that like button so that way you can let us know hey i really enjoyed this episode if you're new around here go ahead and hit the subscribe button also make sure to turn on that notification bell so that way you can get notified every time a new show gets uploaded if you're listening to the audio version i would like to say thank you thank you thank you so much make sure to give today's episode five stars so that way we can move up in that algorithm and potentially get new listeners that would be lovely thank you guys so much 
Um, and also, if you would like to financially support the show so that way you can help us keep the lights on and keep producer Plank out of the basement, we have a Patreon that is going to be in the description. You guys can just, just a dollar. That's all it takes is a dollar. And with that dollar, you also get exclusive content on our Patreon page that we release every single week. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Canon Culture Podcast. We will see you guys next week. Make sure to keep it canon.